Often in a first heat transfer class, you learned something that looks like this. You said that the emissivity from a surface is equal to the absorptivity. Well, we want to make sure that you understand is that this is not generally true. So this is not generally true. And we want to understand when this is actually true and what approximations allow this to be used. The basis of this is something called Kirchhoff's Law. And one statement of it is given as follows. It says that if you place this differential area element, dA, in a furnace or a black enclosure at some temperature, TA, then the power emitted in a particular di direction, d omega, is given in terms of the uh, directional spectral emissivity times the black body intensity. So this together is just the, the directional intensity for this uh, body. Uh, times dA cosine theta, because we understand that the definition of I prime lambda is a heat transfer rate per projected area in some solid angle uh, interval in some wavelength interval. And so, um, it's sort of a complicated statement, but just saying that there's no reason to believe that there's going to be anisotropy or directional directional variation uh, on the uh, of, of, of radiation on the surface, it means that in any given direction, the absorbed and emitted energies from DA1 should be equal. So if I'm in a particular direction, I wouldn't Im imagine that I transmit a lot of energy into that particular direction on the enclosure, but I don't get much out of that particular direction. So what this means is that, that from a radiation perspective, the amount of energy that is transmitted, that's absorbed from a particular direction should be the same amount that's emitted in a particular direction. And if this thing is in equilibrium, that is in radiative equilibrium, then epsilon lambda theta is equal to alpha lambda theta. It says that the directional spectral, so this is a true statement, the directional spectral emissivity is always equal to the directional spectral absorptivity. Okay, so that's the starting point for our analysis. That is generally true. The things that we want to do with this are we want to look at limiting cases which tell us when, for example, uh, a, a different quantity, epsilon lambda, the spectral hemispherical quantity, is equal to the spectral hemispherical uh, absorptivity. So when is the spectral hemispherical emissivity equal to the spectral hemispherical absorptivity. To do this, we need to first of all define what we mean by the spectral hemispherical absorptivity. The simple way to do it is that we take a look at what the I lambda prime, so this is the directional quantity, and we integrate the directional quantity in terms of the wavelength, and we compare that to the uh, black body variation over the wavelength. Now we know for the black body variation that we can just simply pull out the black body. The black body does not depend on the direction, and that's why we've, re re we've converted this to a black body uh, in the numerator so that we can essentially just pull it out of here. So when we pull the black body influence out of there, we just get that the spectral hemispherical emissivity can be defined in terms of the directional spectral emissivity uh, integrated over the hemisphere divided by this uh, integration over the hemisphere itself. When we look at the uh, definition for the absorptivity, we can construct a similar argument for the absorptivity in, tor in terms of the absorbed incident radiation, so you see the absorbed incident radiation up here, 
and we divide through by the incident radiation again integrated in the appropriate sense. What I'm doing is premature. I was pulling this out, but what I want to sh say is that when we compare these two and say that, uh, well, the one thing we know is we know for a fact that by Kirchhoff's, the basic issue in Kirchhoff's is that alpha lambda directional is equal to epsilon lambda directional. So we can replace this uh, alpha lambda by epsilon lambda. What we'd like to say is that epsilon lambda here is equal to alpha lambda here. We'd like to make this equivalence. To make that equivalence, it means that we'd have to be able to pull out, because you notice in the epsilon lambda definition, there is no uh, intensity. So there is no intensity here. There is an intensity, a directional intensity in the alpha definition. And that directional intensity can only be taken out under the condition that we have a diffuse, uh, a diffuse surface. So, comparing that, we see the spectral hemispherical emissivity is equal to the spectral hemispherical absorb absorptivity only if the incident radiation is diffuse. So we have to have a diffuse uh, incident radiation field for that to be true. Uh, for total hemispherical properties, we need to perform similar manipulations. And so for the total case, we see that the total hemispherical emissivity can be specified in terms of the spectral hemispherical value times the black body emissive power, the spectral black body emissive power. Similarly, the total hemispherical absorptivity can be defined in terms of its spectral hemispherical value times the incident uh, intensity, the irradiation, the spectral irradiation. And so the uh, issue here, of course, is that if we think about the definition of G lambda, that G lambda is defined in terms of some I lambda I cosine theta, that there are certain restrictions on when this has to be true for this to be equivalent. And so the equivalence really has to do with our ability to represent this E lambda B over EB in a similar way as G lambda, as this G lambda over G lambda T. And so when we look at it, this total hemispherical value of absorptivity equals the total hemispherical value of emissivity if the following uh, constraints are met. The source providing G lambda has to have a spectral distribution that's proportional to a black body. So if this thing is proportional to a black body, then the band fraction information that we have here has to be the same. In fact, it's more, it's, it's more restrictive in, this, in that sense that Alpha T and Epsilon T have to have this, again, the way I've said it, is that this proportionality is the same as what we're getting for the, uh, for the emissivity. And the other possibility is that the body is gray and the absorptivity and the emissivity are independent of wavelength. Well, if the absorptivity and the emissivity are independent of wavelength, that's a sort of a simple case of that. Um, so under those conditions, Epsilon is equal to alpha as long as we have a great diffuse surface, which is oftentimes a reasonable engineering approximation. Uh, if you're given epsilon lambda and, uh, and you know that, for example, epsilon lambda is equivalent because uh, it's a, a diffuse source is equal to alpha lambda. So this is a diffuse source argument, as we indicated earlier. That does not imply that epsilon is equal to alpha. So just having epsilon lambda equal to alpha lambda does not mean that epsilon is equal to alpha. And we can take a look at some examples that make clear um, how to uh, interpret this.